everyone, it's Sammy from Sammy Sweet Life. I sat down to just film a little clip for my vlog that I just posted, so be sure to check that out. I'll try to link it down below if I can remember, but today's video is all about migraines. So I'm gonna give you guys a migraine update. This is quite a big migraine update for me in the extent that I have hardly had any migraines. I've hardly had any migraines. It's hard to even say this because it's so unusual and so new for me. But basically since Stella was born, I've had a few here and there, but not very many. And it was mostly just right after I had her, just a few months right after I had her, your hormones go crazy and they drop and you're establishing your breast milk and all these things. Um, so I did have a few then, and then I did go to the neurologist pretty early on after having her. They don't do Botox when you're nursing. They don't do Botox when you're pregnant. So I didn't have Botox for a really long time and I was still nursing. I went in and they gave me what's called trigger point injections and it's they inject steroid or just saline into certain spots on your neck um, and it loosens all the muscles and joints and everything. Really, it can be so much as just the physical needle loosening the spots. And also, if it's a steroid, that also helps to loosen everything up. So I have a really, really tight neck. I hold a lot of tension, like all down my neck area, and that can contribute to migraines. So they think that's just part of, I ended up having a car accident in college. It was actually not my fault. Somebody ran a stop sign, rammed into my car, and they T-boned me, and my my car spun 180 degrees. It was pretty significant. I had major whiplash from it. I went to a chiropractor after this. I went to physical therapy after this. I was on muscle relaxers for quite a while and it was a you know, a big ordeal and my migraines did pick up after that. And then my posture and my neck have never been the same after this event. So that was way back in college. I don't have any like pain or anything from it, but it definitely picked up my migraine situation because of just the neck tension. I definitely still need to work on my posture and part of that is due to this accident, my posture is just really bad. So I still need to work on that. I'm afraid to kind of do too much with my neck because it is so tight. So I'm really careful, even like neck stretches, I'm really careful with how far I go. I don't try to push or strain or anything with my neck. Even with sit-ups sometimes, I'm really careful with my neck. I'm just really careful with my neck because I notice like if I have a neck ache, I tend to get a headache afterwards. Totally migraine related. So this all stems from that. Of course, my migraines have happened since I started menstruating like preteen years. So I have had a big long history of migraines. They are definitely hormonal. Um, when we lived in Colorado, any kind of storm front and change in barometric pressure would set me off. We actually had some wildfires, just the smoke from the wildfires set me off. I was super sick for like a week. During a big wildfire, the sky was like orangish and it was kind of eerie and I got sick from it a lot. So I have major triggers really, really strong perfume or cigarette smoke can set me off sometimes. I have food triggers. I steer clear of nitrate foods, like basically processed meats is where you get nitrate. So bacon, any kind of sausage, any kind of hot dogs, I always get a nitrate free variety. For some reason, they substitute celery salt and that does have some natural nitrates in it, but it doesn't set me off for some reason. But any ones that say sodium nitrate or sodium nitrate really will set me off. And that's still to this day, I stick away from those things. Also pepperoni, I get uncured pepperoni and it's very rare that we go out and I have pepperoni on anything. And even then it's just like a couple of slices. I'm really, really careful with especially the nitrates, because I know that's a trigger for me. And that was just through years of trial and error, finding out certain things that set me off. Until recently, I still had migraines around my period. Before and after, I would tend to have migraines. And that's just until after giving birth to Stella, I ended up having them really bad through the hormone changes. I had the trigger point injections and they had already scheduled me for another one. And I think they wait like six to eight weeks. They had scheduled me for another one. This was you know, a couple months after Stella was born and I hadn't had a single migraine between those two. So I canceled my appointment and I have not had hardly any issues since. I ended up having like one or two migraines randomly throughout that amount of time. And I ended up running out of medication right at the start of your headache. You take these abortive medications and it aborts your headache. <laughs> So that's what they are. Usually they're triptans or some sort of form like that. I'm on Imitrex, so if I get a migraine, I take Imitrex. Well, my prescription ran out. Well, I ended up taking the last one I had, looked at my box to refill it, and it was like years old. <laughs> the medicine hadn't expired, but my refill ability had expired. So I had to have a neurologist appointment because I just needed a refill just in case. I never want to be without medicine. And that's something like, even when I'm 
packing, even when I'm just taking the diaper bag, I always have medicine with me because I don't wanna be in a situation where I don't have the medicine. So yeah, I called them, they refilled the prescription for me and I think I've used maybe one, maybe not. I don't even know if I've used any from that box, but that was months ago, just months and months ago. So I haven't had hardly any headaches. So I have a couple of theories of why I don't have them as bad anymore. Um, one, I had them really bad during school. I really cared about school and I was stressed out about school, especially in high school. And then again, in college, they got worse and worse. And then I got into the car accident. They got worse from there as well. And I just think, lack of stress. I'm just not under a whole lot of stress. I try to manage it the best I can. I also have started exercising. I'm still like a few months shy of a year of exercising and exercise is a good stress reliever. So that's also something that I think plays into it. I can exercise and move my body and that will help alleviate some stress. Also, I'm really careful about my diet. I make sure that I don't skip meals. I make sure that I avoid the foods that could potentially set me off. And I also make sure I stay hydrated and definitely something to do with having Stella completely changed my hormones. My periods are still a little bit different than they used to be. I don't get migraines pretty much every time before I would get a migraine or a very, very close to a migraine headache, like a really throbbing headache that was almost a migraine. Um, but lately I have hardly gotten even like one tiny little headache at the beginning and end of my period. I'll still have a little headache here and there, but I can just manage it with a little bit of ibuprofen and after like a dose or two during the first day or the last day of my period, I'm fine. And it's so different than how it used to be. I would used to be out for like a day or two with headaches and migraines and it's just different. So definitely something to do with having Stella changed my hormones. I don't know how or why, but I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm basically migraine free now. And the other thing that has happened, I ended up just I think when I was pregnant with her, just hating my hair, I ended up chopping it all off myself and then asking Johnny to give me an undercut. And I'm gonna turn, <laughs> a weird angle here, but I'm gonna turn. I have this part of my head all the way down, shaved, and right now it's a little bit long. I'll turn all the way around so you guys can see. It doesn't look the greatest, but it's just here all the way down. And that's called an undercut. So I have that and I just, I've always seen these pictures on Pinterest with people with like little designs done through their undercuts and I just really wanted to have one. And it had this added benefit of lightening my hair. I used to have my hair pulled back in a ponytail and it just would make my head start throbbing and it's just due to the pressure of all of the hair, the weight of all of the hair. And now I leave my bun up all the time. Basically half of my hair is gone. It's still big like, I don't know if you guys can see, I'll take it down. I'll do a tour for you guys, give you a hair tour. So like I have a really thick hair. It's something that every hairdresser has always just mentioned that like, oh my gosh, your hair is so thick anytime I go to a new hairdresser. So keep in mind, the back half of my head is completely shaved and that's how thick my hair is. Like it's still a huge, massive ponytail. That's still a lot of hair. So I still have tons of hair. I can still like, if my hair is down, you can't really tell that I have the undercut. It's so thick, but my hair has stayed shorter. I used to have really, really long hair. I used to not have the undercut. And I think this has been like my magic thing. I don't know why or how it works, but I've talked to other people who have had the same story with this. So it just doesn't weigh down my head as much. And I find that when my bun starts getting heavy, I go get a haircut. I get a couple of inches cut off. So my hair is like, to here right now and when it gets a little longer I'm gonna chop it again to like shoulder length and I don't go as long as I used to go so I had hair like way down my back and it was the full head of hair and it was really heavy so anytime I would pull it up it would really weigh down my head and I think just the pulling like pulling on the back of my head to get it up in the ponytail and also pulling my forehead would also contribute to some massive headaches. And even when my hair was down, it was super duper heavy. And I think that was one of the magic keys for me, just the missing piece. And it was a, a byproduct of this. I just was pregnant, getting really frustrated and hating my hair and just feeling so hot. So one day I chopped it really, really short. And then another day I had him shave the back. Definitely changed my migraine situation. Like I said, those are my theories on why it helped, but it definitely helped. And I'm a big believer in it. And since then I've talked to two other people who've had undercuts. One was actually Olivia's hairdresser. She had her first like big chop and her hairdresser had a major undercut, basically like 
to the sides and just the top little section was done up and it was super cute. She had it in braids and it was different colors, like mermaid colors, and it was gorgeous. And I complimented her on her undercut while she was cutting Olivia's hair. And she said she did it because she was having really bad headaches. And I was like, wait a minute, like that's my theory too on my undercut. <laughs> and then just recently in my last vlog, I went to Indianapolis and somebody in the hotel who was there early morning when I was about to go get on the plane. I was waiting for my mom to pick me up to take me. It was like 4 a.m., but the hotel staff was there and she walked by and she goes, oh, I really like your undercut. And I told her, thank you. I think it maybe helps with my migraines. And she goes, I got my undercut to help me with migraines and it has totally helped. So we both like bonded over this like undercut migraine situation. So that's two other people that have had the same story with me. And also the doctor who gives me my Botox, who I went to for years, we've been in Austin for five years, and I went to her for four and a half years. I haven't been back because I haven't needed to go back, but she actually had a side undercut. When her hair flipped over to one side, you could see like one whole side was done underneath. And I had asked her about it one day, and she said her hair is just so heavy, so she doesn't like like the pulling weight of it. And that gave me an idea of, hmm, maybe I should try that someday. I wanna say the main, the main difference is the undercut. I think that really helped. My hair is super thick. You guys could see how thick it is and it just weighs me down. It physically weighs me down. And it's so, so nice to not have all of that weight on the back of my head. And I really think that helped. It may not work for everybody, but if it could work for one person, that's why I want to put this video out there. I haven't had the Botox since getting pregnant with Stella and she did trigger points for me early on in my pregnancy. Again, like hormones go crazy during pregnancy. So I had the trigger point injections with saline like one time during my pregnancy, maybe two times and no Botox that whole time. And then after giving birth, I had the trigger points one time after giving birth and that was it. And that's been, gosh, Stella's going to be two in like a month and a half. So it's been basically almost three years since having Botox and I haven't needed it. It's been great and I never ever take my health for granted after having so many, so many years of just struggling and suffering. And one of the things that got me through was my scrapbook blog, like just being able to scrapbook a little bit and then post it on my vlog and watch the visitor count go up and then started my YouTube channel. It's something that I can do around being sick and I could always manage it eventually. So that's been something that's a huge, huge thing that kept me going because there were some times early on where like, I don't know if I can live like this forever. Like we've got to find some sort of solution. I went to a few different neurologists growing up trying to find some sort of solution because the medicines never worked. I was trying various different things, various doses, <laughs> doses of different things and nothing was working and I was struggling so bad. I'm gonna get choked up, but I definitely got to that point like, I don't know if I can keep going after doing this, like, you know, like your fourth or fifth or sixth or eighth or 10th hour where you're repeatedly going in the bathroom and your head is hurting so bad that it makes you physically ill. Um, it's brutal. And anybody who doesn't know how bad migraines get, you're super lucky. And I hope you never find out. Anybody I know who's ever had a migraine, Sometimes they'll have like a random migraine here and there. They always come to me and they're like, I cannot believe you've always gone through this kind of thing. And it's just such a hard thing to go through. And it's such a silent thing because, you know, I'm, I'm bedridden when I'm sick. And then when I'm not sick, I'm fine. <laughs> and nobody knows. So it's definitely helped to have this outlet, to have something, it's something that I could do and look forward to during those darker times for me. And I'm just really thankful that it's been so long that I don't really have to think about migraines on an everyday basis. I used to be more worried about it and more anxious about it because if you're out and about and you get a migraine, I have an aura. So I get like funny tunnel vision with sparkly metallic rainbowy squiggles. Uh, if that happens and I'm like driving somewhere, I can't keep driving for much longer because I'm losing vision, like the whole beginning of the migraine. And then I also get numbness, so I won't physically be able to feel things. So if I'm out and about and I get a migraine, sometimes somebody has to come pick me up and we have to come get my car later. And that's happened to me before because I just physically can't drive in that state. So it's a whole crazy ordeal. By the way, I have like cake batter on me. I just realized it was all over my hand. Um, I just made strawberry bread, it's in the oven. So that's like, that's crusty stuff on the back of my hand. <laughs>
Anyway, I just wanted to share the undercut situation, let you guys know how it's going. I get questions from time to time on my videos about you know, how are your migraines doing? How's the Botox going? And I haven't had Botox in almost three years, but I definitely, absolutely 100% swear by the Botox. If you are struggling with chronic migraine, go get the Botox. Like if you can afford it, if you can put the money together, scrap that money together, get the Botox. It's worth every single penny to get your life back. And that was how it was for me. Like we met my deductible every single year until this last year. This is the first year we've not met my deductible because I've always had the Botox or always had expensive procedures and expensive medicines and all that stuff. So definitely go get it. It's worth it. I'm definitely only able to function today because of those years of being able to prevent migraines. Ah, that's it. One kind of rambling migraine video, but I put it all in here for you guys. I probably will do another one of these. If anything changes, I definitely will do another one of these, but I just keep you guys up to date. Like I said, people ask about it from time to time. So I'm happy to post about it and let you guys know maybe one little solution that may help. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you guys are well. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.